welcome back to the channel. We are getting so close to gardening season. And when gardening season comes along, that means that it canning season is right behind it. So if you are like me and you like to put in a thriving garden and grow some of your own food, then you also are canning it or preserving it in some way. Most people are, unless you do a really small garden and you just eat fresh as you go, which we like to do that too. But I also like to put up a lot of food. I preserve our food in many different ways by dehydrating, freezing, um, and then my main way is canning. And so when, I, when I'm getting ready for the canning process, there are a few things that I do. And I'm gonna take you along today and kind of show you what I do to get prepped for it. And then I'm also going to show you how I store all of my empty jars as they're flooding in because right now, are I have so many empty jars as we're using most of what we canned last year we're starting to pull them off of our shelves and I am getting all of these empty jars everywhere so what do you do with all these empty jars while you're waiting to recan again this year I'm going to show you how I do that and then the best way to store your canning lids so one of the steps that I do take right now is to make sure I have enough canning lids lids cannot be reused in the canning process and so you need to make sure that you have lids. I like to have a bulk stash of these lids because there's nothing more frustrating than getting ready to do a canning project, pull your produce in from the garden, get everything all set up and realize that you have three lids. <laughs> that is very frustrating. So I like to make sure I have all my lids or at least a very good start to what I'll need for the season. I buy all of my lids on Denali Canning and they have the best lid. They use a preserve lock method and you can literally hear the pop when you open up the lids and feel that suction when you open up the lids on using their canning lids. So the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to get out all of my canning books and I want to show you and go through each one to show you which ones I love using and I pull recipes from all season long. So I am going to share with you my most used canning books and as you can see there's a whole stack of them. Um, this is where I get all of my canning recipes. I will find recipes um, on families that I trust or blogs that I trust and I've been following them for a while. I'll use their recipes because I trust their canning methods. But typically, I don't go off on my own. I don't go find a recipe on Pinterest or anything like that. I stick with people I trust or books that I trust just because um, I want to be safe when I'm canning. So um, these books here are ones that I've used for years now, with the exception of one, and I'll share that one last. But um, I'm going to share with you each of the ones that I use. Now this one is Canning and Preserving for Beginners. And I really liked this one when I first got started. It has very simple water bath canning methods in it. And I would highly recommend starting with water bath canning just to get your feet wet. They don't, it doesn't take very long. It's not super scary. Um, and it's just a really good way to get started. Also, you don't have a lot of cost up front. A water bath canner is not very expensive. You could even use just a regular pot if you had something to keep your jars up off the bottom of your pot. So I would highly recommend starting with water bath canning and this cookbook is a perfect cookbook to get started with too. It's very inexpensive, it's not super overwhelming, and I just, I really enjoyed it. I don't pull a whole lot from it now as I'm in farther into my canning journey, but this was a very really good beginning spot for it. This one I used, it's called Naturally Sweet Food in Jars, and I used this one um, last year for the first time. So last year was my first year of getting it and I love this one. So if you're like me, you try and minimize how much sugar you have in, in your diets. And I used to think sugar was really, really bad for you, but I think that the evaporated cane juice that I get from Azure Standard is not bad for you. But just like all foods, in moderation is best. Well, if you've ever made a jam or a jelly or any kind of preserve, you will know that it takes a lot of sugar for those recipes. Most recipes with pectin 
call for like six plus cups of sugar. That is a lot of sugar. And when you're pulling fruit from your garden or somewhere fresh, a farmer's market, and you're ready to do a canning project, it just really pains my stomach to be dumping in all of this sugar when I'm trying to make a healthy product right on my shelf. So I love this cookbook because this uses different sweeteners besides sugar like honey and maple syrup, maple sugars, and you can make jams and preserves and sauces and all different kinds of things using those. Actually, my ketchup recipe is from this cookbook and I love it. So I would highly recommend this if you're like me trying to just stay away from um, sugars in your diet. Okay. Now here's the big scary one that I use for all my pressure canning needs. And this is the complete guide to pressure canning. As you can see, I have so many tags here of things to remember. This is where I get most all of my ready-made meals. So anything that I want to put in a jar that I can just dump out and reheat up on a quick busy night, this is it. However, all of those need to be pressure canned. I use a Denali canning pressure canner because I have a glass top stove. This canner was specifically designed for stove stove tops that are flat tops for induction stoves for any basically any stove top can use this pressure canner which i don't believe there's a pressure canner out there um, besides this one that is made for that and so i feel very safe using it in my kitchen i actually have a video out on how to use that and i'll drop it in the description and i'll also drop denali canning in this description as well for lids and the canner because that's where i get all of my my lids and canning or in Canada. But this book right here is really great because this book um, has so many meals in it. Chicken pot pie filling, soups, stews, chilies, um, anything you can think of that's a ready-made meal, you'll find it in here. I really highly recommend it. How to can beans, which I have a video out on that, um, and broths and all that stuff. So anytime you see a pressure can, here it is. This is the workhorse. This one, as you can see, got lots of tags as well, is the complete book of home preserving by Ball. Honestly, I probably pulled this one the absolute most. Um, it has everything. I mean, from preserves to sauces to some pressure canning stuff, every vegetable, every fruit you can pretty much find in this book. It's very big and thick. I use it all the time. So I would highly recommend this book, if you can only pick one right now, I would say this is probably the one I would pick as of today <laughs> because um, it has everything you need in it. It has over 400 recipes in it. And so you have everything. Now, with that being said, if you are a very beginner, never can before in your life, this could be pretty overwhelming because you're, you would look at all 400 of those recipes and you're like, where do I even begin? What do I even do? And there's so many variations of so many things. So if you want to make a salsa, there's like a bazillion salsas in here that you can try and make. So it can be overwhelming and that's why I have this beginner one um, part of the list. Because if you're just starting out and maybe you just want to can some jams this year and give it a try, then this would be just fine. Um, but I highly recommend this ball one. It'll give you almost everything you need. Now this one I'm super excited about. I haven't used it yet. I just got it. It actually was just released. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Melissa Norris on the Homestead documentary, and she's become a friend of mine, and I'm so excited for her. But everything worth preserving, and this is a complete guide to food preservation at home. So there's all kinds of things in here, and I cannot wait to dive into this one this year. So um, I, the reason I hadn't put this one as number one in my put balls because I have not used it yet. I just got it a couple weeks ago and I cannot wait to dive into it and start um, preserving some foods and using her recipes in here. So I would highly recommend checking her out. I completely trust all of her things. So that's why I, um, I say that this is on my list right now, even though I haven't used it because I know that it's going to be great. So those are the books that you're going to want or my books that I recommend and if you don't have any of them, at least pick one, get it heat at your house so that you are ready to pull some recipes. If you um, are new to canning, I would highly recommend not going on Pinterest or just Google in general and trying to find a canning recipe. Get one that you trust, one that you know is good, um, and these books are all well-trusted sources. 
or any kind of blog that you trust. So Homesteading Family is where I get a lot of recipes from and I definitely trust their um, knowledge and ability in the canning world. Melissa K. Norris is another one that I would highly trust that you can, that I would feel safe saying go find her recipes as well. And obviously my recipes that I have out previously for canning is used either from one of these books or somebody that I trust. So I would say it's trustworthy as well. So now we're gonna talk about how to store your lids. Okay, so now is the time to start looking at your lids and how many you have. The best way to store lids that I have found is in these little containers like this. They fit perfectly in them and even even this one fits perfectly where you can put the little ones, the regular mouth like that, and a few this way, and they hold nice and tight. I have some here on top. I have plenty of regular mouth lids. Um, and you can just simply take your lid as you need it and just pull one out at a time, just like this, and be able to use them. And you can see how many you have. They stay nice and organized. I just keep these. Right here, there's empty jars down here in this cabinet, and I keep them right on a shelf right there, and they're super easy and organized. In that bin also, um, it's kind of hard to get out. I just have this plastic tub that's on the bottom, and I throw all my rings in there. You don't need a ton of rings because if you've watched any of my previous canning videos, I do not keep my jars stored with the ring on. So once they are out of the counter, they have completely cooled, I remove the ring before I stick them on my shelf, so you don't need a ton of um, rings. You can toss them as they get nasty or whatever. If you buy new jars that come with lids and rings, just keep the new rings and throw the other ones away. You don't need a ton of them or do a craft project or something with them because um, you are not gonna need them after they're in the counter and you can reuse them over and over and over again. So the best way to organize my Denali canning lids is just sticking them in these organizational tubs like this. I got them, I think at Target, I'm pretty sure I found them on, um, I have also seen them on Amazon, so I will link ones that are like this. They're very heavy duty, good, strong plastic, so they're not flimsy at all. And that is the simplest way to organize your lids. The best also part about it is you can stack them. So if you have limited space, you can stack these up just like this and you can do multiple of them. So if you have a lot of regular mouth and a lot of um, wide mouth lids, you can just keep stacking them up onto one of these and just keep getting them like that. So it's a perfect way to organize all of your lids. Okay, so now we have moved into where I have all of these jars. Now, where I showed you where how I store the lids, that cabinet is full of empty jars as well. So how I wash my jars is after we use the food out of them, I just wash them in warm soapy water and I let them completely air dry. So I leave them sitting right here on my counter for days and let them completely air dry out um, because I don't want anything to harbor in those jars. So again, I, I wash and dry them with soapy or wash them with warm soapy water before I use them as well, before I do a canning project. But that's the way I wash them after they've had food in them as well. So as they sit here, and I don't have room on that other shelf, and I'm not doing any mini canning projects right now because I don't have a garden going, I need to be able to store them. And so at this time, I just kind of, before I go and store them for long term, I just run my finger around all of them. I kind of take a look at them, make sure that there's no like inline crack or nicks around the top, because if there are, I make sure and set them aside. If there is a crack on them, I just toss them all together. But if there's a little nick on the side, I just want to know that so that I don't put them in the lineup for canning and we just use them for something else. If I want to use it for storage or whatever else I want to use it for. Um, so this is what I kind of try and do right now as I have all these empty jars swarming around me. I will just take them and feel them, look at them, make sure that they are all good to go. Um, these I'm going to go ahead and put in my long-term storage, which I'll show you how I do that because I know that I have plenty in that cabinet here in the house. So when canning starts and I'm 
pulling things in and I'm getting it going, I can start with jars that are already here in the house and I'll pull my tubs in as I need to of all of these empty jars. So let's head out to the shop and I will show you how I store my empty jars um, for long term until I'm ready to use them in a project. Okay, we are out here in the shop. Don't mind the radio that we always keep on. Um, and this is how I store my empty jars. So as you can see, they're just these totes. And this one's actually half empty, which is going to have all the ones that are on my kitchen counter. But I'm going to show you what I do to maximize my space. Okay, so because I'm not like moving these around very much, it's literally I just come in out here, take what I need, put what I need back. They just really stand still. I don't worry about bubble wrapping them or doing anything like that. But what I do here is I put all of my big jars on the bottom. And then I just take a piece of cardboard, rest it right on top. And then my pint size and my half pint can fit right on top of that. And it maximizes a full container of jars. And I have three totes of these. Um, I, I have some brand new jars here, so eventually I'll probably have to get another tote. And I just keep them all right here inside of these totes out in my shop and I just bring them in as I need to. If you had a whole tote of half gallon jars, you probably wouldn't be able to get another layer. It, you might be able to get these little short um, fat, I don't even know they're half pints, but they're like the short round ones, fat ones. You could probably um, get those on a second layer with half gallons but not for uh, but not quarts or pints on a second layer with half gallons but that's how I store all of my empty jars and um, I just keep them right out in the shop no big deal um, I have a nice little stack of them and they're easily stored that way so I hope that this was helpful for you in knowing the canning books that I have and what are some that maybe you'd want to try out this year how to organize and store all of your canning supplies getting them all ready and making sure that you are ready to go because canning season is fast approaching and we are going to want to make sure that we have everything in our homes ready for when the projects start flooding in. Make sure to like and subscribe to the video. I send out one new video a week. If you jump on over to the blog, I'll put the link in the description and become an email subscriber. I send two emails out a week there of from scratch cooking that's always gluten free homestead living, farm life, and all of the simple living things. I hope that this was helpful for you, and we will see you next time.